Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. At the time of recording this video, it's roughly 12 a.m. of 29 January in China, which happens to be their new year. What a coincidence. So Satya Nadella says DeepSeek AI came out as a surprise. In fact, it shook the AI leaders in the United States. Why is it? Also, there is a lot of discussion around DeepSeek AI on the internet. Is the discussion really worth it? Or is it just like any other AI model out there? In this video, we will discuss about all of these topics. Towards the end, I'll also show you how to run DeepSeek AI model on your machine, just like we did Llama 3 or other models in the past. Let's get started. So it all started when a Chinese company called Hangsaw, I hope I pronounced the name right. So this company launched their AI model called DeepSeek AI R1, which is the very first version of this model. Surprisingly, the very first version matches the performance of the best model that we have today, which is OpenAI O3. If you're not aware, there is something called SWE benchmarking, software engineering benchmarking, using which the performance of the models is calculated. And this model, which is trained at a very low cost, it is told the model is trained at a cost of $5.5 million only, matches the performance of OpenAI. So one, it is told to be cost efficient. Two, it is told it matches the performance in the SW benchmarking. So if both of these are true, and if it continues to perform the same way, it's definitely a game changer. Now the big question, but Abhishek, what does it mean to you and me who are end users of this AI models? Definitely it's a game changer even for us because two important things to notice. One, this model, the R1 model of DeepSeek is open, unlike open AI. So this model is open. That means you can download this model. You can run this model on your machine, in your company, and you can make API calls to this model for absolutely free if you are running it locally. Now, this is very helpful if you want to have your LLMs or if you want to have the data secure, if you want to make secure calls to the LLMs. Another thing, let's say you are a startup founder and you have a chatbot, which is very common. There are a lot of chatbots which are actually built on OpenAI's APIs. That is, when you ask the chatbot a question or when you ask the tool a question, it fires queries on the or to the OpenAI's APIs and it gets the response back. Now, it is important to understand different models of OpenAI. If you take OpenAI O3, for every 1 million tokens, it costs you around 7.5 US dollars. Of course, if you use it through the ChatGPT interface, it costs $200 per month. But when it comes to companies, they use the API calls because they are chat assistants, chatbots. So it costs you 7.5 US dollars per 1 million parameters. Whereas if this startup moves to DeepSeek and if they hit or if it comes to 1 million tokens, it is only 0 0.5, 0 0.15 US dollars. Let me make it simple. Take a look at this prompt. So I provided a simple prompt to print numbers 1 to 10. Both the input that is given by me and the output that is sent by this model comes to 511 tokens. So similarly, if it comes to 1 million tokens after series of queries, OpenAI charge you 7.5 US dollars, whereas the DeepSeek would only charge 0.15 US dollars. However, saying all this, it is important to note 
open ai's apis are very widely tested it is tested by the users it is tested by the people within open ai for a very long time whereas deep seek is fairly new so we should give it more time to be tested thoroughly and also software engineering benchmarks should be evaluated pretty thoroughly finally another important thing is the training cost because deep seek ai is only trained at 5.5 million dollars there are a lot of questions on why open ai's training cost is so high that's why you see a dip in the shares of top ai leaders today the cost of nvidia share price is very high because you know end of the day to train the model or to run the model or to run different models nvidia has something called cuda which is their framework and because of that there is a lot of popularity for the nvidia chips now if the training cost of deep seek ai comes to only 550 million dollars then is there any alternate way of training the models did they train the models on mac studios so these are all the questions that led to the stock price dip of top ai leaders now let's go and try to run this model locally in very simple steps so if you have watched our previous videos where we ran llama 3 pi model and other models locally the steps are going to be fairly same so we will learn how to run this model in three simple steps step 1 is to download olama so to download olama just go and search for olama and choose either mac os linux or windows whatever you are using in my case i use mac os so i'll just download it also understand the performance of these models would fairly depend on your machine configuration if you have a gpu integrated machine or gpu architectured machine then the model's performance would be very fast and you know it's going to be high performance otherwise if you are using cpus definitely there would be a lot of delay in the response from these models okay so this is our step 1 where we downloaded olama once you download olama just click on that dmg file and install olama you will see a olama icon on the menu bar and also you can just go to your terminal and run olama to verify the installation is successful now the second step is to run olama run followed by the model that you want to run in our case we need deep seek ai so just search for deep seek and quite obviously it's trending so you will find it very easily so 1.5 billion parameters 7 8b 14b the higher the billion parameters that means the model is trained on more amount of data just go for 1.5 billion parameters which comes to 1.1 gig so you know for your local i think this is fairly good so you can use this just copy and run it if you want a very high performance deep seek model then you should go for 671 billion parameters but you should have a good cpu gpu as well as you should have a good ram to support this model okay so once this model is run you can directly use the model here for example write a python code to print 1 to 10 a very simple one right so yeah so this is the output you can use it using your command line let's say you don't want to use it through the command line and you need a chat gpt like experience there are two things that you can do one you can go back to your browser and install open web ui you will get exact interface like chat gpt we have used this in the past where we downloaded olama 
integrated Llama 3 with Open Web UI. In this video, let's try something different and go for Chatbox AI. So Chatbox AI can also be downloaded. Like I'm using Mac, so I can just download it. Apple Silicon or Intel based. Once you download the DMG and install it, you will see an interface like this. Just go to the settings and in the model provider, you can choose either Chatbox AI. For that, you need to provide a API token or the API key. I want to choose Olama because I'm already learning running Olama on my machine. So choose Olama as a model provider and this is the default URL. Just go for it. And in the model, so these are the different models that I ran locally on my machine. Llama 3.2, 3.1, Pi model, and let's use the DeepSeq one. Save it. And there you go. You have an interface where you can just ask a question. Of course, it's just similar to uh, CLI. The only difference is, you know, you have a fancy UI here. That's it. So I can just ask, why is Pluto a dwarf planet? My bad. Yeah. So that's it. You get the response from the model. Now you are using the best performance model out there as per the SW benchmarking and as per what is told by DeepSeek AI company. So you are running it locally on your machine, which is a truly a game changer. Finally, I would like to say, don't see this as a scary thing. In fact, a lot of AI experts actually find it very interesting. And you know, a lot of AI experts say that this is good for the entire humanity because we are going to solve great problems if the model cost or the training of the model cost comes down. Because as the training of models becomes easy and as it becomes more economic, people are going to use these models in the more economic way and everybody is going to solve different problems which are in the different fields for us. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. See you all in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.